Sirs, it's a great pleasure to have you here with us in Tiwa Forum. So welcome. We hope you come back next year again. I, I hope I, to get invited. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any if, if you have any contacts or influence, let me know. I'll try try to do my do my do my best. Um, so tell us a little bit about a Colom Free Trade Zone. Uh, what is it? How did the project get started? The the Colom Free Trade Zone started in 1948. It was a project the Colon Chamber of Commerce was trying to figure out what could they do to stimulate the economy after the Second World War. Colon being the Caribbean side of the Panama Canal had a lot of activity during the war because of a massive movement of troops. So it was a, a boom town. And after the war, economic activity basically collapsed. So the Colon Chamber of Commerce hired a U.S. Uh, consultant to give him an idea what to do. And he came up with a plan of doing basically a copy paste of the Colon Free Trade, of the U.S. Free Trade Zone Law of 1933. There's been free trade zone laws in the United States from way back. And so what he said, this is logical. You're right alongside the canal. So you can uh, have the opportunity of getting cargo off of the boat, do something with it, and put it back on. So that was in 1948. So it's 67 years now. And today it represents over 25,000 uh, jobs and approximately 6% of the Panama's GDP. So it's a very important sector of the economy. Wow. Um, and uh, currently it's, uh, uh, are there any, I guess, kind of like new efforts being undergone with the expansion of the, of the canal, also to expand the free trade zone? Or? Well, the, right now we're facing a, a, a rough point in time because of our neighbors and our major trading partners are Colombia and Venezuela. Colombia had a devaluation, very heavy devaluation of the peso. And Venezuela, as you know, is an economic basket case. So those two countries, being the biggest ones in the neighborhood, have uh, heavily impacted our turnover. So the focus that I've been applying as free zone manager for the two and a half years I've been there is uh, targeting multinational companies to look at the Colón Free Trade Zone as their regional distribution center. That regional distribution center concept means that from the factory over to your final destination, you can have an inventory much closer to your point of consumption. So we, we basically are handling uh, Central America, the Caribbean, and, and the impact, which is Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela. So that's our, our sphere of influence. So new efforts are targeting multinational companies Huawei, a, a very big Chinese telecom company, recently installed operations there. And today, there are over 120 people working on two shifts. So that type of effort is what we're looking at, is getting the, the message out to attract major multinationals to look at the free trade zone as their regional distribution center. Great. Um, and. Uh... Uh, reading a little bit about the project, I have also read that there's uh, efforts to uh, kind of like impact the community around the free trade zone uh, in a positive way. So what are, I guess, some specific actions um, that that are, uh, the free trade zone is taking to? Colón Puerto Libre eh, was an idea of trying to create the incentives eh, on the other side of the wall because the Colón free trade zone is a, a walled area because the goods are, have not paid any of the duties that are applicable to import into the country. So uh, because of the incentives, the, the free trade zone is still a very vibrant uh, economic center. But on the other side of the wall, in, in the city of Colón, uh, there's a lot of poverty, a lot of rundown buildings. And so the idea with Colón Puerto Libre was to create some incentives to have them be applied in the city and also create some of the wealth that you see inside the free trade zone. So that from the perspective of Colón Zona Libre being wholesale, Colón Puerto Libre, it would be a retail magnet for people to come and do shopping. So really uh, the Antigua Forum was uh, for me the laboratory to be able to develop the pitch to the candidates uh, and uh, with the elections in 2014, President Varela uh, appointed me to 
head up the Colón Free Trade Zone and implement Colón Puerto Libre. So I'm very thankful to the Antigua Forum because from being a very crazy idea, uh, the Antigua Forum helped me to develop the idea, uh, be on the lookout for possible uh, enemies of the project and how to deal with resistance because something as radical as what this project is going to be once it starts developing is going to have some natural opponents. So I'm, I'm very thankful that over the Antigua forums that I've been assisting, it's been a witness and participant in the successful development of the project. Um, and I guess uh, part of that question uh, is also, do you believe in trickle-down economics? And uh, How do you think that, you know, all the, the economic, um, I guess the positive economic impact that it has on, on the country overall, how do you think that's going to like transfer to? Um, I have a problem with the, the phrase trickle-down economics because it's sometimes used by uh, the left uh, to attack capitalism okay. because cutting taxes is only going to benefit the wealthy and that somehow uh, we give out uh, handouts. And so what I believe in is growth. That's how we combat poverty. Uh, we shouldn't be worried about what somebody has or how much money they have. We should be worried about the poor. And my focus uh, as somebody who is uh, liberty-minded is to create the opportunities so that the markets can work. And so uh, La Zona Libre de Colón, uh, if you look at the massive amount of wealth that's been created over the 67 years has been reinvested in uh, Panama so that Panama's skyline today, I like to tell a lot of people, is in part due to the surplus wealth that's been created in the free trade zone. Because for a lot of people, it's very hard to understand how is it possible that you have this major metropolitan city in Latin America. It really defies the paradigm of what people think Latin America should look like. And I think the free zone, in part, has to be pointed out to be the responsible part of that growth that we see in, in Panama today. Because those free zone traders, who are people who've come from somewhere else to establish themselves, to do wholesale into a, an over 100 million population in the surrounding economic area has meant that they believe in Panama and so that they invest their uh, surplus funds back into the economy. One of the families that began in the Colón Free Trade Zone is the Mota family. Don Alberto Mota was a, an early Free Zone user and today Copa Airlines is part of the, their family's uh, holdings. And Copa Airlines last year moved 14 million passengers through Panama. So that's the, to get back to your question about trickle-down economics, in the sense of if you create a opportunity, you create growth. If you create growth, you destroy poverty. And at the end of the day, that's what we should be interested in. Great. Um, and do you think that this uh, free, free, zone, free trade zone can be, a, an, uh, I guess, like an inspiration to other countries to follow suit and to try to... Uh, you know, copy the good things about the free trade zone? I was in uh, China in October and I had an opportunity to see Shenzhen because I'd been invited by Huawei who uh, is in the free zone. They wanted me to go visit their headquarters. And Shenzhen is the first special economic zone that was created after the death of Mao in China. And Deng Xiaoping, the new prime minister, uh, was amazed by looking at Hong Kong and he would go back to across the border and it was remarkable, much like Colón, Zona Libre with what we're trying to do in Colón, Puerto Libre. He said, how is it possible that Hong Kong is this incredible city and just a few kilometers away we have this absolute poverty? And so he started uh, the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone and today Shenzhen is remarkable. It's some of the most expensive real estate in China. Vibrant uh, industry, a lot of people employed. So when we talk about special economic zones, uh, and Zona Libre de Colón is uh, one of many special economic zones, I think it's a testament to the fact that people respond to incentives. If you lower uh, friction 
and lower taxes and incentivize investment, the results are going to be very positive for your community, for your country. So, yes, I'm, I'm a firm believer in special economic zones, and it was interesting to see in this Antigua Forum how other people are also trying to re replicate the model. And uh, how do you see, I guess, you have a lot of contact with uh, the, you know, uh, I guess the trade federations, or, or not trade federations, but, uh, oh yes, trade federations of other countries. Um, is it something uh, that you, uh, is kind of like promoting the ideas of free trade something that you actively pursue when you have contact with these other organizations? Or No doubt about it. Uh, what we do uh, as free zone manager uh, is uh, take advantage of the public role to promote the idea of free trade. Wherever we can go, uh, we will point to the success that we've had in Zona Libre de Colón so that we can... Uh, promote that idea. Uh, I've been recently in, in Peru, in Colombia, uh, obviously in Venezuela as well. So it's very difficult, but it, you can't get tired of, of promoting it because you have a, a real world example. And I think actions speak louder than words. So part of my job as free zone manager is not just to promote the free zone, but also to promote free enterprise in, in the region. Great. Well, thank you, Sirsen. Sirs, uh, it's a pleasure having you here in Antigua. And, uh, it's always a pleasure to be here in Antigua, so I look forward to seeing you soon. Great, thanks. Thank you.